This is Coons Ford Turf Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. Sadness sweeps across Terrapin Nation tonight with the death of Jordan McNair, uh, one of the Terrapin football players. And uh, we got Pat Corner on hold. We'll talk to him about the U.S. Open in just a few minutes. But right now, Wayne's going to come on for a second or two. Wayne, never thought it would lead to this, did you? Bruce, I actually thought he was out of the woods. But what happened with Jordan McNair, who suffered heat stroke about two weeks ago, he was rushed to the hospital. Uh, according to reports, he underwent uh, some organ failure and needed a liver transplant, which he had. And that was two weeks ago. Um, you know, I, I thought he was out of the woods, but he, this afternoon he passed away. And, and I'm, he wasn't going to play football again, but he's one of those kids that we knew from walking around there and, and being with the team a lot. Uh, it's, it's just a shock. Well, he certainly could have a, could have had a great life without football. So, I mean, just it's tragic. It's tragic beyond. It's funny. An hour before that, I called you up very upset about the fact that Kevin Herter is going to miss the first two months of the season because of a broken hand and thought that was important and was upset about that. It was like getting hit with a left and then a right cross that knocked me out. Well, because when I heard the news, there's nothing to say. Yeah, I mean, it's the ultimate. Well, DJ said, our team is heartbroken with the loss of Jordan McNair. Jordan was an incredible young man, and his passion and enthusiasm made him an invaluable and beloved member of our team. Jordan was a hard worker, and he always had a smile on his face. He was an extremely talented football player and a humble and genuine human being. He embodied the essence of what it meant to be a teammate. He was a fighter. Over the past few weeks, Jordan never gave up with his family, friends, and team by his side. Our team will continue to be inspired by the spirit of this brave fighter. Please continue to pray for Jordan's family during this difficult time. And the tweets yeah. came in from all over the country. And uh, yeah. I'm talking about somebody who's about 6'4", 325. Two-time All-Metro at McDonough. Uh, he's a Max Prep uh, All-American in 2014. He was going to play some this year, for real. And he was really making great strides. And I really only know him as a football player. Right. He but, was from Randallstown, Maryland, which is uh, certainly in our, my neck of the woods. And uh, we had a business in Randallstown for years. He had a great football program there. But... Years ago, but he obviously, with the growth of McDonough, seems like all the really, really good kids wind up at McDonough or now St. Francis. And uh, just very, very sad. Uh, we're going to have you on later in the show. We'll talk about this. I know you got a lot. Well, you know, we're going to have an upbeat show about the Capitol celebration and, you know, talk about Herder and will he still be drafted? And it all takes a back seat to the death of, young, of this young man. Very, very sad. All right, Bruce, I'll check back in uh, in the third segment, and uh, we'll, yep, we'll talk about some happier things. All right, right now we're going to go out to the phones, and my good buddy Pat Corner is on the phone, and Pat, I don't know if you heard that segment, but what a tragedy, isn't it? A young man, 19 years old, passes away from uh, a football-related either heat or some, you know, we don't know, you just don't get the info anymore. Yeah, no, I, and I, I did hear it. It's such a, it's, you know, like you were saying, we think what we do day to day is important and the world of sports is important and it is to a lot of people. But when you, when you hear about a, a young kid like that who loses his life and his family loses him, it's, you know, puts things in perspective. It's just, it's sad news. Yeah, when in comparison to anything else, it just tells you that really nothing means nothing. You got to have your health and your family's health. Right. And, the poor family is affected forever and uh, just really, really sad. There's nothing else yep. to say. All right, let's take a look at the U.S. Open. We're going to get back to that subject in the third segment with Wayne. Right now, we're going to talk to Pat about the U.S. Open coming up and 
The favorite to no surprise is Dustin Johnson at seven and a half to one. Yep. Uh, tell us about uh, Shinnecock and what kind of problems it presents. Is, are we going to get a score around par, or is it, uh, has that ship sailed these days? How's the tournament look going into it at this point? I already know. Yeah, who, I already know who you love in the tournament. So yes, you do. I don't be, even have to say because anything. I do too. I think right. it's a Justin Rose tournament. It, it is right now. It is, but uh, but yeah. And talking about the golf course, and then you know, in U.S. Opens every year, the golf course is usually the the main focus. In the last couple years, um, you know, they've gotten away from some of the old traditional style U.S. Open golf courses when they went to uh, Chambers Bay and Aaron Hills. Is a little bit uh, of a different uh, test there, but now. They're back to one of the old classics. Shinnecock is, um, you know, on TV, it's going to look like it's a wide open golf course. There's, there aren't a lot of trees out there, like not many at all. But what it has is uh, is thick rough that you know graduates from, you know, very thick rough to knee high fescue looking rough. Um, but the real story out there is are the the greens. Um, those of us who remember back to the last time the U.S. Open was there, which was 2004 when Retief Goosen won uh, his second U.S. Open, it, the greens got away from the USGA, and you literally had balls uh, being putted off the greens into bunkers, and it, and it got away from them, and, and Goosen put on an unbelievable putting display and, and ended up uh, surviving more than anything and winning the tournament. Uh, I don't think it'll get away from them as much this year because they're going to be aware of it. Um, but the story out there is 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 just going to be that pars are good scores, right? And that's what brings uh, Justin Rose into the picture, and uh, mm-hmm. it doesn't bode well for like the Ricky Fowlers and Jordan Spieth who've been spraying the ball everywhere lately, right? Uh, Justin Day, you never know, but I think Justin Thomas might have a little rebirth this week. No, oh, yeah, I think so. You know, Justin. Uh, just lost his number one ranking again back to DJ. That's probably going to flip-flop back and forth a little bit. Um, you know, what Justin Thomas has as an advantage is he can hit the ball so high, and the greens out there are going to be so firm that you can't you can't fly the ball to the flag. These guys are going to have to play the bounces and, and really guess right. Uh, but someone like a Justin Thomas or even a Rory who hits it so high can, can actually hold some of these greens a little bit better. Uh What's been going right for Justin Top, uh, Dustin Johnson, rather, you know, other than everything? It just seems <laughs> his entire game is there, without question. Yeah, he, uh, you know, the old, the knock on him in years past was that he was always, a, you know, a phenomenal driver of the golf ball, but the closer he got to the hole, the, the worse he became. And then every now and then he'd make the odd, you know, bad mistake at the wrong time and make a big number. But, but, uh, he has become not only arguably the best driver of the golf ball, but he's, he's become a very good wedge player, uh, and a very streaky putter. I mean, we saw him last week when it was, when it was still a tight tournament and he made a downhill 12 to 15 footer for par that really kept his round going. And then all of a sudden he he went crazy at the end and won by six. Uh, but he's just, he's done a great job of, of, maintaining his strengths and what he's good at, but he's done an even better job of improving on his weaknesses, which is really uh, wedge play, chipping, and putting. What's really amazing with Dustin Johnson is you say he's become a great wedge player, and the mm-hmm. reason is is because every one of his shots to the green is a wedge. That's true. All right? Yeah. In other yeah, words, he true. gets he's so much practice time. at it. Yeah. Ricky Fowler, now, he, you know, he came in, was he second in the Masters? Am I, am I right about that? Yep, that's right. Right, and it seems like he's been on the cusp. Does this course play to his style? It's, uh, you know, on my short list, um, I don't necessarily have Ricky on there. Uh, it's, it could certainly backfire because Ricky Fowler is a world-class player and he's done everything but win a major. Um the thing that I that I think will continue to haunt him are are just the odd blow up holes. Um, I think that's why he hasn't won a major yet. Is is every now and then he'll he'll make a double and a triple where bogey would be a, would have been a good score. Um, especially of course this demanding. Um, you know, it just takes one day, one bad day where where you know a, a two over par turns into a five or six over par round, and then and then you're out of it and. 
historically that's kind of been his downfall. Well, you got DJ at seven and a half to one, Rory at ten to one, Justin Rose, Justin Thomas, and Jason Day at twelve to one. Ricky, mm-hmm. Ricky, and Jordan Spieth at fifteen to one, and then an interesting combo at seventeen to one. John Rahm and none, none other than Tiger Woods. Tiger, is, right? Is that just for principle that he's got to be in there? <laughs> you know, it's <clears throat> oddly. I, I don't know. You know, I'm not a gambler, um, but yes, I, I just I think anytime Tiger shows any form whatsoever a lot of people are going to give him the benefit of the doubt. And, and a lot of people are waiting for him to, to break out. And he's been close a couple of times and he's, he's looked pretty good. And no one can, no one can call, you know, can, can look back on more um, pressure moments and successful moments than Tiger Woods. And when you get into a championship, this demanding, um, it's going to test everyone mentally and, he has to be considered. He's not my pick to win, but he has to be considered to, to at least uh, play well. Well, not to not to criticize anyone because I just missed a eighteen inch putt to to uh, continue in a tournament. So I got. No, I didn't think you did that anymore. Yeah, I did it. I did it big time. Okay, <laughs> we all do it. Right, but uh, Tiger's been missing every. He's been missing three out of four putts between seven to ten feet. And yep. You just can't win if you miss those, especially no, and, and, a, especially a U.S. Open. Right, and to me, that's the biggest difference between Tiger of now versus Tiger of old. You know, we can't expect him to be the Tiger of old, but but what he did back then is he made every single pressure putt that he had to make, and and it's it's still a little strange to see him, you know, missing these putts where. You know, it used to be he'd hit it all over the place. He'd get up and down for par and, and just keep himself in it. And now he seems to just be burning the edges a little bit more. So it's, um, you know, the old, the law of averages catches up to everybody. And, and you know, I hate to, hate to use that as a reason, but uh, he just never missed anything for 15 years. Yeah. Well, so uh, what are what would be a winning score on this course? So, I mean... Uh, Three, four under that, par? Is that what it's going to take? That's a great question. Yeah, if, if I were playing, I'd, I'd take, you know, if you gave me one under each day, I'd, I'd take four under and never even leave the clubhouse. Um, honestly, it just depends on on how firm and fast those greens get. Um, you know, if they get some rain, then it could be a different story. It could, be, it could go into, you know, six to eight under par. Uh, if it stays dry, even par to... So four under is really, really good. Well, to me, the why I like Justin Rose in this tournament is because if you've been watching this year, mm-hmm. uh, Justin has been the steadiest golfer. And yeah. it's week after week after week he's in the hunt. Can't win every tournament, you know, but he's always in the hunt. And, right. you know, uh, Rory is another guy who's having trouble with the putter. Yeah. And DJ yep. can get himself into trouble with some drives. Yep. And Ricky and Jordan Spieth the same way. Jason Day, when he's on, is as good as anybody. Mm-hmm. But I like, I like. well, I'll ask you first. Give me your coming Sunday. We're going to do it today, and we're going to yeah. do it Saturday morning like we always do it. Give me your final two twosomes on Sunday right now. Right now, I like, uh, I like DJ... And Brooks Kepka, and then uh, my final group. I, I like Justin Rose and Jason Day. Uh, I think that I think those two are really really strong favorites this week. Yeah, well, I'm close to you. I like Justin Rose and Justin Thomas. This could be a yeah. Justin battle out. Uh, I think a lot of times when these guys lose that number one, they they come roaring back. And in in the next position. Don't ask me why, but I just think Ricky Fowler seems to always show up. Yeah. So I'm going to go with him and Rory because I just uh, just a gut feel. That's it. But yeah. uh, it, we'll probably be wrong on all four. All right. I mean, you never, you know, they could all miss the cut. Right. <laughs> it, know, it, it, wouldn't sh- a- 
It would not shock me in the least, but this should be a great right. one. And this one's all normal time. This is not one of these West Coast jobs. Exactly. Yeah, so, it's back to exactly what we think is normal time. Right. But, uh, so this will be on. It'll end Sunday around, what, 7 probably at the latest? Yeah, yeah. And uh, Father's Day. It's always U.S. Open Sunday. It's always Father's Day. So that'll the, be Nothing better. Be nice. Nothing better than that. The last group tees off when on Sunday, like two thirty, something like that. Yeah, they're usually two thirty to, to three o'clock even. Let's hope the uh, we- let's hope the weather's good. I mean, weather's been I hope so. so bad. I uh, hope so. And and on a side note, I hope Lefty's in it. Nothing is better than than Lefty with the New York crowd uh, going down the stretch in a U.S. Open. Uh, it's the one that he wants more than anything now. Uh, that would make for great TV if he were if he were in contention. Well, in my opinion, there's, he's got two chances, slim and none, and, <laughs> and slim left town, as they say. I think That's he's right. just I think he's just too wild for this course. Yeah, now, no, I, I do too. But uh, I'd love to see him play well. Oh, so everybody would, you know. But yeah. I don't. I think that would be. In fact, he was back there around twenty to one, twenty-two to one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Maybe the worst bet in the world is trying to pick a winner in this thing because. Right. You know, you should be getting a lot better, like uh, betting uh, Rory at ten to one. It's just yeah. How many yeah. guys are in the U.S. Open? Is it? It's like a hundred and forty or hundred and. That's a good question. I should know it. I want to say one hundred and fifty-two. Yeah, and and how many um, make the cut? Seven, the lowest seventy-two uh, in ties. Generally, the lower seventy in ties. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, and this is a tournament where somebody could come from back in the pack. All right. Oh, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Because because uh, again, it's. You know, if you're just a little bit off, you can shoot a high score. And shooting a couple under, you can you can jump twenty to thirty places. Yeah, certainly. So uh, you know, it always goes back to me to Johnny Miller when he posted that sixty-three. Exactly. What three yeah. hours before anybody else finished? Right. And right. when you post that kind of score, the heat comes on. Cause, yeah, because it's the uh, U.S. Open. But uh, yeah, guys that finish early and they post that score, and you know, now they're done. They they're they're not going to make any more mistakes. And the guys out there see that on the leaderboard, and they they know that's the target. Well, so it's uh, it'll be interesting. Father's Day always means the U.S. Open, and uh, you and me will be tweeting or, or texting it. back and forth. So let's see what happens. Saturday yep. morning, nine o'clock for your analysis, and uh, we'll take it from there. Sounds great. All right, Pat, thanks uh, for checking in. All right. This is is Bruce Posner. You are listening to Coons for Terp Talk this Wednesday night and every Wednesday night for the past 10 years. Once again, we'll have Wayne on the third segment to discuss the Jordan McNair situation and give you some updates on Kevin Herter, some surprising news today. But uh, let's hope it doesn't affect his draft status. But can't shake this Jordan McNair thing. It's just, uh, there's no comparison. I just, uh, it's, and then you combine that with Cliff Tucker a couple weeks ago. Wow. There's just nothing to say. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. Welcome back to Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. All right, bring in my good buddy from Coons Ford, and it's Dennis Kalatis, of course. And Dennis, as I said at the beginning of the show, I know you were listening. Terrapin Nation is mourning tonight the loss of Jordan McNair, and that's two of our kids in the past, uh, boy, past five weeks or so, Chris Tucker and now yeah. Jordan McNair, the kid from McDonough, from Randallstown, Maryland, and heartbreaking, isn't it? Yeah, I saw it flash across uh, social media, Bruce, and I cannot believe it. My my heart goes out to his family. It's just an unbelievable loss. Yeah, it's it's terrible. You know, when I think about a kid who gets an injury and his athletic career ends, I always think about uh, your son, all right, because he was going to yeah. be a, a number one lacrosse player. But, you know, he, he had his troubles, but at least, you know, he comes back to lead a normal life. You don't have to play a sport to lead a good life. And this poor kid is gone. You know, it's just, it's really sad. As I mean, it's, it's words don't explain it, you know? Uh, yeah, Bruce, we, we have a lot to be thankful for, but it's, it's about living your life one day at a time and hugging your loved ones because you never know that the next time they leave uh, your sight might be the last time you see them. That's a sobering thought. But certainly these young men, I mean, they love playing sports. They love playing uh, football. And, uh, you know, it's a great, great sport. And, uh, you know, it's just not a fortunate thing that happened. 
Yeah, it's very, very tragic, and uh, our heart goes out to his family. Being a, a kid from Baltimore, a kid from McDonough, has so many connections to Baltimore. And when these kids go to Maryland, we're so proud that they stay in state. He could have gone to many, many places, but he chose Maryland, and uh, nothing to say. I mean, it's just really sad. I'm sure the inform- information will come out about where the – where funeral is and if there's anything at college park we'll have it up on the website but uh it hit us like a ton of bricks today now we didn't know there was a problem but you just don't get that close-knit kind of information anymore with all these new uh, laws the hipaa laws and everything you just don't find out anymore where this where these situations lie so I, that yeah was, yeah yeah i hear you blue spruce and then that look the, the loss is a loss to me i don't i don't get caught up in a lot of times in how somebody uh, leaves the earth, the, 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 the devastation is the same to the family, right? So that, that's not that important. The important thing is that we, uh, we support the family, and I'm sure Turp Nation will. Yeah, I, you know, you're, you're right. It's, you know, nothing you can do can, can bring them back. So, no, no. It, you know, the harping on it just doesn't matter, but it's very, very no, sad. I, so, Dennis, I have, to ask you, I have to ask you a question. So yeah. now Harbaugh talked yesterday about special packages for Lamar Jackson. Now, I know what that means. I know what that means, but they talked about that with the kid from Ohio State whose name slips my mind right now. Uh, Troy Smith. Troy Smith. And it never developed. Now, this kid's different than Troy Smith. But uh, what, are they, what are they talking about, special packages? I don't know, Bruce. I mean, I'm not, look, I'm not that giddy about it. Julian Elderman, you know, we saw him burn the Ravens when he chucked the ball to him on a bubble screen and he pulled up and threw it downfield. Uh, I'm not. I'm not big on this young man becoming a, 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 you know, a wide receiver. And you know, I don't know. Do they put him in a wild? Is it in a wildcat package where there's a, a, a run threat pass option? Running quarterbacks don't make it in the NFL, Bruce. So I'm concerned about that. I would rather see him work on his mechanics. Um, never mind gimmicks, right? Uh, and also, it's less snaps for Joe Flacco. Joe Flacco doesn't want to give up eight to ten snaps a game to a rookie quarterback. No, I agree, but if it helps the team so much for that, you know what I mean? If if they can figure out a system, but it never seems to work. No, you know, we we saw in the Super Bowl when Tom Brady went out for a pass and couldn't stretch another half an inch to, to, to haul in the pass, right? So uh, I don't like it. Uh, I'm not a big fan of it. I think they have other things they can work on. Sure, it might be fun and exciting to talk about, and maybe they're dying to see him on the field, but I, li- I like to see him on the field in a regular pro-style offense and, Look, there's a couple things they can do in a game, but uh, I'm all for one or two. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not all for eight to ten, Bruce. I think that's way too many snaps uh, taken away from Joe Flacco. Yeah, I know. No. Well, it's certainly if Joe's playing well. And so far, they say he's come to camp and invigorated. And uh, Eric Weddle said he hadn't seen Joe like this for a while. That he's embraced the competition, going up against RG three and Lamar Jackson, and no. Harbaugh said Lamar's going to be the backup. Is that the kiss of death for uh, RG3, or do you think well, they'll, I'm, they'll stay with yeah, three? I mean, uh, the, the one thing about RG3, he's very affordable. They have him on the cheap, Bruce. I mean, it's, it's less than a million dollars a year, and that's good insurance policy uh, in case of injury, or if they choose to move away from Joe down the road, uh, RG3 would be a great backup to Lamar Jackson. So as long as they can keep him on the cheap, they, they may carry him, but uh, depends on it's, it's a numbers game. Depends on how many defensive linemen they want to keep, uh, defensive backs, etc. I know that Coach Harbaugh loves special teams, and unless RG three can play special teams, I don't think he's going to be there. But at this point, fifty fifty whether he ends up making the final roster. Now, has the first so draft pick the, has the first draft pick been signed yet? Hayden Hurst. Yeah, he's, uh, yeah. Every, everybody's under contract. They're all they're all good to go. Yeah, I don't understand yeah. what what takes long with this because it's like a dead slot. Isn't it just a yeah. slot payment? It, it is, and the Rams, uh, the Rams for the last few years, they signed everybody late, and they signed them all on the same day. They, they signed all the rookies at the same time. Every team has different philosophies, but I'm with you. They're slotted, so to me, the earlier you get them, the better. One thing I want to note, uh, Bruce, is um, C.J. Mosley, you know, he's in his option year, his contract. He did not hold out. He, he came into the camp. I think that sends a great message for the team. I think the Ravens should do all they can to sign him and to extend him. In sharp contracts to guys like Julio Jones and many others who have chosen uh, David Johnson, the running back out of Arizona, they've chosen to stay away from these mandatory OTAs, pay the fines, and put themselves at odds against these teams. 
Yeah, it's CJ. I think CJ Mosley, with his most first and foremost, with his tremendous play, has earned a spot uh, in the Ravens' future, and he will be one of the guys they step up for. And I think they're going to be looking hard and fast at a lot of guys who they won't step up for at this point. Yeah, I would agree with you, but I, I love it. And even Ha Ha Clinton Dix from the Packers, he came into camp, same situation as Mosley. He said, you know, holding out doesn't help anything. And, and I think these guys are right. They, they get it. And to me, they're the kind of players you want to re sign and extend that second contract to. Well, we know one guy who's not too happy about it, and that's Mr. Belichick. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? Uh, He's got uh, he's got some problems up there, but they're still they're still the odds on favorite to win the Super Bowl once again, Bruce. Well, what the heck they they have a they, they almost have a walk in through their division, and you can't put a value on that in home games, yeah. just about guaranteed throughout. It's it's nuts. It really is that uh, they have such an easy road. They have it. Yeah, they they have it. They have the inside track to the uh, home field advantage and to the AFC Championship game year in and year out, Bruce. Yeah, for sure. So anyway, Dennis. You know, I'm getting the itch a little bit. I was looking at the uh, focuses the other day, not the focuses, the fusions, and I noticed that uh, the hybrid fusion is 44 miles a gallon, and you've got some in the mid 20s. I didn't know they were that. I'm not going to say inexpensive, but they're that reasonable. Yeah, that that fusion, it at least is real well. The least payment on that is next to nothing in a big scheme of things, and that's we. We, we, we're doing a lot of leasing lately, Bruce, because it, it just makes sense. Very, very affordable when you look at what you can buy for or one for versus leasing it. Do you find most people keep the car when they lease it or they just give it up at the end and get another one? No, they get another one because, uh, number one, the lease end value is too high, and that's how they keep the payments low. Uh, and number two, they always try to get you out three months early. They'll, they'll wait the last 90 days with a payment to get you the new lease. Makes yeah, sense for everybody. that's yeah. what they, that's what they did to us, and we gladly took that early exit because it seems like you're always a little bit where you owe them money. It's just uh, yeah, so yeah, they they make it enticing to, to re up uh, re up the lease for sure. They'll do anything to keep you as a customer, right? <laughs> well, they know it's, it's smart. It's smarter to keep uh, the ones you have happy than get those to get new ones all the time. There's no doubt about it. Hey, listen, LeBron to the Lakers. That's becoming the new mantra now. Where uh, the line on that is seven to five now. The LeBron is That's going good. to the Lakers. That's good. You know, I love the Lakers. You love the Lakers. I've been hoping for this for a long, long time. I would love to see him finish out his career in L.A. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. And plus, it's not like he's walking into this guaranteed situation. He's going to have to do a lot of work to make that team good. I mean, when you yeah. hear that he might go to Houston and he's going to talk to Golden State, that's just absurd. It's it's beyond absurd. Well, you know what? He he is in such a great point of his career. He can actually play for a dollar a year, right? He can sign a a dollar a year contract because he makes so much more money with his endorsements and everything. You talk about a guy, a player having so much bargaining power. He can actually pick the team he goes to. Yeah, he can, but I guarantee you, he ain't. He's not passing on thirty five million. All right. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's still out of money, but it's worth it to him. To sign with LA for for less than any other team for more because he'll get that much more exposure. All the stars, you know, dying to be at the court side, you know, paying all kind of crazy money for those tickets and just the endorsements alone. Bruce, he could just extend his legacy and if he can bring another championship to the Lakers, uh, he'll do a lot to cement his legacy in a sport. Yeah, I think it would be great. And uh, if he could, you know, that would be a real challenge to go to one of these other teams and just be like the Kevin Durant. To me, that's not the legacy of a superstar like LeBron. He needs to finish it up by taking a team, guiding it to the title, and they've got the guards, they've got the guys. I love, I like that team a lot, and I think he would mean a tremendous amount to it. I think it would be just awesome to see him in the uh, purple and gold, as they say. Well, let me ask you this. If the Lakers sign him and he's coming to D.C. next year, you're going, aren't you? I'm going no matter what. All right, for that one. I, I, you know, I pick out three or four games and I go to them. And just like you and me are going to pick out three or four hockey games and go to them. Uh, yeah. Just, uh, it's not easy to go to D.C., but it's to, to watch the greatest guys in the world. And now now we got the best team in the world playing in D.C. Right. But so, it's like when Jordan used to come to town with the, with the, with the, the Bulls, you know, it was must-see. You, you had to go out and see them. Didn't matter 
how bad the Wizards were, you, you had to come out and see Jordan play. Oh, yeah. Oh, without question about that. But, you know, we'll be, we'll be buying those tickets when they first go on sale, just like uh, everybody else. Dennis, tomorrow I'll be on your show at 4.30. Tell everybody where they can find it. A uh, little, little bit up the dial from you. And, uh, again, uh, it's called the Sunday Sports Voice. We play it on Thursday. We'll have Bruce on there at 4.30. Always a great guest. We'll have a lot of hard-hitting content right up the dial. All right, Dennis. All thanks, right. thanks a lot for coming on. And uh, once again, Coons Ford of Security Boulevard. No other place like it as they vie for the President's Award again this year, correct? You got it. You know, got to, got to win it. Uh, that's uh, that's uh, one of our goals. And the Triple Crown, too. And the Triple Crown. Either one would be a win. All right, Dennis. Thanks a lot, my friend. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. This is Bruce Posner. You are listening to Coons Ford Terp Talk here on CBS Sports Radio 1300. We shall be back in a few moments. This is Coons Ford Terp Talk. Call 410-481-1300 now. Once again, here's Bruce Posner. What a great program the shootout for soldiers is. Uh, Let me bring Wayne Viner on right now. Wayne, we might need to do some video on that. It's for... uh, it's for vets of uh, the war and guys who are disabled, and it's a tremendous program. They play 24 hours straight of lacrosse, and you see some great games and some strange games, but it's a great event, and uh, I'll get you the details if you can make it. That sounds like something to do. Uh, of course, there's a lot more lacrosse going on with the Under Armour All-American game. I guess you'll be out there. Yeah, of course we'll be out there on the and for the game. We'll be so, out there on the twenty. What is it the 29th interviewing all the new Terps and in the new capacity of uh, inside the dot com. Our editor over there, uh, Todd Carton, wants us to cover a few other teams, so uh, we'll take care of that as well. That's increasedlax dot com, and uh, Wayne, you've done a great job getting that one started. Well, it's been a lot of fun to cover. I mean, we talk about all of these, but to actually go to the games and cover them, it's a different perspective, everything from that tremendous thunderstorm at Loyola in the first round of the NCAA tournament, uh, to going to UMBC, to hanging out at Hopkins, gotten a lot more local coverage. And uh, with your help, we look to expand that as we go over the summer and in the next season. Are yeah, you the next season, the, next that other, season? the Inside the Crease Lax.com is uh, uh, it's going to be a hit. And we'll have the new shirts up on our website in the shopping area. All right, as soon as we find a, a, uh, a maker of the shirts. So if you're out yes. there and you do t shirts or Under Armour shirts, give me a call or send me or Wayne an email because we're looking to get some done right away. Uh, Wayne. Let's go back to McNair for a second. This one has hit everybody like a ton of bricks. And uh, he was projected to play this year. Zach, I mean, before he got hurt or injured, he was going to be an integral part of the team, correct? It, it certainly looked like it. I thought there'd be some shuffling on the offensive line. And a lot of guys have played. I mean, this isn't something where it's only been five kids. So I would have expected to see him actually get on the field this year in a more significant role. And I've heard of this happening to a few kids, especially the young man who played for Towson. Um, This happens at the pro level. Heat stroke, you know, everybody goes to practice. I'm sure Jordan's been to hundreds of football practices throughout his life. And two weeks ago, it just didn't go right and get heat stroke. And they uh, did everything they could, and they, they stopped practice. They were supposed to have a football event for recruits the next day. They canceled that, and they, they took this super seriously. And I don't have all the sources exactly nailed down, but from what I can piece together, this is just a guess, I think they actually took him to shock trauma to try and save him. And then, of course, he had the liver transplant, and it, it just just didn't work out. <laughs> I, I Sometimes it doesn't. I've heard the of this happening. It's just this is the first time it's happened to somebody I know. It's it's a lot different when you've met these people, the kids. Yeah, I, I I'm just uh, look. I know how, you know, if between the two of us, I'm super super close with lacrosse and basketball, and you're certainly super close to football. 
you and Mason are on top of that more than it's possible. And uh, so I know that, uh, but we're all upset. I mean, it's all part of Terrapin Nation, but nothing to say. You know, it's just real. I feel so bad for the family and just uh, whatever. Nothing to say. Uh, we'll hear more as, it, as details come out. Of course, it'll be on TerpTalk.com, and uh, we'll take it from there. Wayne? So I was talking, before we move on, I was talking to Mason and Jordan, who looked at the GoFundMe page, and there is a GoFundMe page to help out with every all the expenses that came out of this tragedy. And uh, donations are picking up in the wake of the young man's passing. So if you have a chance, you can go to the Jordan McNair GoFundMe page. I'm sure that any amount will help at this time. And it's one of those things you say it's the least we can do. Yeah, no, I agree. And uh, you have it up on the site, I would assume, correct? I'm going to put it up. I have the notice that he passed away. I'm going to get the address. I'm going to get the address and uh, put that up in the story, brief story of his passing. So, yes, there are some happier things that happened. Let me say one thing before you go into that. we got a few minutes. Number one, I happen to take the time to listen to podcast number 38 from Jordan and Mason. And though I disagree with a lot of what they said, very interesting, very well done. It's 31 minutes. I advise everybody to go to the website, TerpTalk.com, and listen to these kids. It's one of the top 15 in the country. Yes, uh, in fact, in that category, for a couple of days, they got up to number four, and then some other material came out. So they're consistently in the top 15 as far as listeners. Um, they, they do a good job, and part of what they're trying to do is say some things that aren't exactly mainstream. They're trying to make an interesting discussion. So uh, you and I agree. We actually probably agree too much. So it's nice to have somebody who has no, a no. I, you, you need in. you need the contrarian opinion, and that provides it on the website if you want to listen to their show. And I mean, I thought the one they did today was great. I happened to have the time to listen to it, and uh, I thought it was great. And uh, hats off to them. Uh, again, all the shows are up on the website if you want to go into the archives. And uh, you wouldn't be the only person listening to the show. And of course, we have the boys on once in a while. Certainly Mason, because yep. Mason lives here while Jordan is doing his duty at uh, North Dakota State. So let's yep, get into, before I know you want to talk about Springsteen, and I do too, but I want to right. talk about Kevin Herter. And I'm interested to see now, he's had that hand problem for a while. He was told to shut it down after day one when he hit like 11 threes or something. Uh how do you think it's going to affect him in the draft? You know, I wish the draft was tonight rather than 10 days from now. Well, I don't think it's going to affect him. In fact, they might. I, I don't have any inside information on this one. But my take is he probably consulted with the guys who were going to draft him and said, look, you have this hand problem and you probably should get this all fixed before the season starts because we're going to draft you. We want you in one piece. We don't want to draft you and then have to sit you down in November um, and, and you miss a lot of season time. So being off for two months now means you'll be back in August and you'll be ready to hit the hardwood uh, for whomever is lucky enough to draft Kevin Herter. Well, I'm hoping beyond hope that he goes number 18 to San Antonio, gets a shot to play for Pop and – how I mean, he fits into that so well because it seems like everybody on that team winds up with wide open shots. And if Kevin winds up with wide open shots, look out. I mean, you know, I don't care how far they are because he was hitting uh, he was hitting NBA threes since the day he stepped on in the summer for practice uh, two years ago. He can make the deep shot. Uh, he's a fantastic three point shooter, and if he goes someplace to plays a good um, space and pace type offense, and San Antonio does that as well as anybody. Uh, he'll get to handle the ball a little bit. He can be a shutdown defender. We've seen it and won that game at Georgetown with a block shot. Uh, he is a complete ball player. I'd like to see him. Wish he had a little more point guard run at Maryland, but you know, we got to see him for a couple of years. And hopefully that'll be the jersey that you see kids wearing as a Kevin Herter pro jersey. 
Uh, and then correct. He makes it that far. Correct. Well, I think he will. And uh, two, well, look, two months mean two months mean he doesn't miss the season. So we're talking the season doesn't start to what mid November, and uh, right now it's only June. So he's got time to recover. And I think uh, you know, look, he hit eleven threes with a bad hand. <laughs> right. <laughs> I mean, come on. Houston was zero for twenty eight from the threes. And if you want to hear the well, worst stat you ever heard in your life, the Orioles are three for 50 with men in scoring position. Think about that. Well, I don't want to talk about the games. Like I said on Saturday, I'm, I'm watching the standings upside down, uh, looking for the first draft pick. But you got some, some inside information there. Uh, how's the turkey over at the Atmans? Uh, the best. And we are busy. I mean, the, we're not getting super crowds at the stadium, but uh, Admins is getting it. And you know what happens? Word of mouth gets around. And people come back and they try it once and they come back and back. And uh, I got to get your butt out there, man. I'm going to give you another option. Another option I think is next. Might be the 28th. All right. At three oh, well, I can make that. Look, the parade was unexpected. So now I get to talk about the parade. I was supposed to be there with you at Camden Yards today to see another wasted pitching performance. But see, I don't want to get into that. But I got to go to a championship parade yesterday, and that, that scrambled the schedule all over the place. So I didn't know there were 400, 500,000 active cap spans. There isn't. Spent- there isn't. All right. They've had the jerseys, they had the hats, and maybe they're all bandwagoners. I don't know. Well, look, the the train is open. The bandwagon is open for people to jump in. And uh, I doubt very seriously that they'll only have 12,000 season tickets sold next year. I think. Oh, when, I think they're going to sell out. They're going to sell out. 1,506, and I think they'll be sold out for the whole year. Yeah, I think they'll be sold out. Although they always keep 1,000 or two uh, for the general public. But between partials, you don't have to buy a full season ticket. You can buy a partial. I think that they will sell out after this performance because basically, you know, if they can keep Wilson and uh, John Carlson, they'll lose a few guys. I think DSP will be gone and uh, Verona probably will be gone. But uh, the heart of that team will still be there. And and has been. It's still your OB, Backstrom, Oshie show there. Uh, Lars Eller signed for a while as well. There's a good core there. They're going to have to pay uh, John Carlson a lot of money. Jay Beagle, who is the only person who's ever won three at three different levels. He won the championship, the ECL, the league that Hershey's in, which is the AHL, and that's the Calder Cup, and the Stanley Cup. The only guy who's ever done that, he has been with the Caps for eight or nine years. He's a free agent. They're probably not going to be able to keep him and Carlson. The salary cap goes up $5 million, and I'm sure they can easily spend that and more on Carlson. No, I don't, we'll see, see, I don't see him. I don't see him keeping Jay. They can't keep everybody. It's just a casualty. And plus, they're not going to be able to keep Grubauer because they got this Russian kid coming in who's supposed to be better than Hopi. Well, they're all supposed to be, but as you said about uh, some Terrapin lacrosse goalies and some of the guys. A lot of guys played, and a lot of guys were great, but how many of them actually won? Yeah, and well, you're right. So Holtby's won it. Now, if you can keep Grubauer around for a bit and trade him, he's probably going to be worth a very high draft pick if someone needs a goalie for a playoff run next year. Or he might get so, you another player to replace uh, Devontae smith uh, Pelly. So, yeah. you know, and I don't know that he's leaving, but you can't keep everybody. You just can't. It no. happens to Super Bowl teams, and seems like the only guy who can put it together is Belichick. So maybe they should consult with him as to how you can keep this group around. But, uh, look. Yeah, it's funny you brought that up because that's how I see this particular team. They had to get rid of several high-priced guys last year. Carl Alsner had been John Carlson's defensive partner for years. Marcus Johansson's been a big score in the power play for the Caps for years. He goes to the Devils. They, they started to unload the people they couldn't pay, and they brought in a bunch of guys you never heard of, some of the guys who couldn't even stay employed in the league last year, and plugged them all in, and it worked. It was a very Belichick-like, that's a good way to put it, performance. They kept the stars, and they brought in a bunch of guys for a league minimum, and it worked. Now those guys are on the league minimum. We're going to have to get paid 
they'll have to go elsewhere. Bottom line is one bo- of those. Bottom line is this, all right? Just keep Barry Trotz, all right? Give him one more year. If he wants to retire, let him retire. But you got to keep him. And Wayne, we are out of time. I thank you for co- contributing today, as you always do. And that'll do it for today. Turn in, tune in on Saturday. Uh, we'll have Pat Corner back to discuss the final two rounds of the U.S. Open. And we'll have lots more going on. Some LeBron talk. 7-5 to five that he winds up on the Lakers. The World Cup's coming up. we got a lot going on. It's sign-off time for Coons Ford Turp Talk. See you Saturday at 9.